Some time ago, a while back ago, when I started this journey, not bef not when I started doing Genesis to Revelation, when I said I was taking you on a journey. Now, if you don't follow me on Facebook, then you probably wouldn't know what I'm saying here. <clears throat> but the idea of going on a journey is the idea of the turtle. <laughs> turtle uh, I like the turtle it's not being so short-sighted in yourself within your thinking that if things don't work out the way you want them to when you want them to work out that it means that it's never going to happen but what happens is our language begins to change. Even though we're right in the middle of the journey, you're literally walking in the direction saying you're never going to get there. This happens in our professional lives, in our personal lives, in our social lives. Again, not with everyone. And just as a reminder, this is for my grandkids, my kids, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, my brothers and sisters in Ghana, my brothers in Bangladesh. I've been saying India, it's not England, in, in Bangladesh. Um, God bless you all. And whomever else this is a blessing to. The, the, the idea is not the so much the end result, it's what you become once you get to the end result. To get what you want, you have to change. There's a constant changing to keep evolving into the next blessing that is on the inside of you to get to. You have to become that for it to be attracted to you. If you stay the same, then the same you shall get. <laughs> uh, if you're constantly giving up. I think that's why there's so much emphasis in speaking faith. But the way I was taught to speak faith wasn't complete in its um, it was too generalized uh, if you say by faith I'm an attorney and you're not going to school that's not faith that's a dream. It's not just walking around quoting a scripture or a belief. Faith is an action. Actions taken. And with those actions taken come resistance, which builds character, muscle, integrity. If your words don't line up with your actions, then you can't possibly think that your faith is active. It, it takes the breaking of your will to be the same but yet want different. After a while of speaking your faith but not taking the actions 
you're turned over to the reprobate mind. <laughs> so it's important that the power of your words are activated not by those around you, but by yourself. You have to activate the words you're spoken. The words will bring the opportunities because people are attracted to what's said, but what holds, what's the glue are the actions. The glue is the actions. So you can speak it, but when the battle comes, if you run away, the running away or the projecting or the procrastination will show who you really are. It's not just you, it's me, it's all of us, it's the human condition. It is the human condition. I was talking to my daughter. Uh, my daughter knows me, so she won't, will not be mad at me when I say this. But we have the tip. My daughter has my my daughter has the gift of faith, and I'm not going to get into what that means. But it's the gift of faith. Something in her automatically just start making things happen when she speaks them. Now, when she gets there, she doesn't, in the past, she didn't recognize, oh, I got there, all right. This is her, her response is usually, well, of course. We've incorporated another aspect, which is called gratitude. <laughs> Recognition of the grace and mercy of God that allows us to be in whatever space that we're in because when we get there, it doesn't necessarily look and feel and taste and sound the way we want it to be, but my God, we're there. Gratitude. Gratitude. How awesome that I can speak a thing into existence, walk it out, overcome the objections of it, and be sitting right in the middle of it. Gratitude. When I went to radio and television broadcasting school some years ago, I didn't think it would look like this, but gratitude. This is not just a random guy getting in front of a mic. I have been trained for this. <laughs> gratitude. Gratitude. All while perking yourself up, realizing that you're in the middle of a journey and that one answered prayer is not the end of your existence. It's, it's not the end of the journey. It's not the, it's not the culmination. It's not the conclusion. You have to resist what we call the devil, but it's all here. But you have to resist the, the, the desire to start projecting onto other people because they don't see you the way you want to see yourself, the way you do see yourself, the way God sees you. As a finished product, someone who has made it in the land of Canaan, although your feet haven't touched down there yet. I want to be the Caleb or the Joshua that gets there. I'm grateful for the Moses. Gratitude. What that means is that I want to realize the blessing of actually fighting the battles of the Philistines that we're about to get into sometime in, in the book of Joshua. Fighting the physical battles, the mental battles, battles of becoming something that is better looking internally for the maturity the wisdom the understanding and the knowledge to be to be adopted and activated 
in my faith and moving forward towards the vision that God has placed on the inside of me. The purpose is kind of selfish, which is to hear him say to me, well done. However, that's later on in my existence. It's actually already been said. But to make sure that I go into this physical battle of being a human being and, and completing my work of perfecting myself, maturing myself, rubbing up against the personalities and the proclivities of the human beings that I'm here to interact with. In other words, dealing with the prospect of being involved with people who don't necessarily believe in your vision, my vision. They're doing the best they can as well. They're also human beings, imperfect in their living things out as you and I are. But the power of your words, the power of my words. Now, I didn't mean to get into this diatribe, this dissertation in this way. I just want to make you aware that's there too. But the basics are simple. Keep your words off of the vision. Keep your words off of the vision. Keep your words, your human existence words, off of the vision. Keep God's words on the vision because you're a part of a greater You're part of a greater thing, peace, plan. Get, be, get beyond your human existence and look at the spiritual vision that God has got you. God has me. God has you on. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, Moses is going back over, summarizing, um, remembering a time when the people were excited to leave Egypt. And the, along the way, they complained. People died off. It's only 40, 41 years, folks. But because of the attitude the wrong attitudes towards the toughness of the journey. If they had gotten there in 11 days, would there have been an appreciation for the journey itself? The idea is to grow in wealth of relationships grow in wealth of traditions, of feast, of togetherness, of unity, operating and making a decision to live by the hand of Moses, or as I've been explaining to you, the kingdom of God. It's the purpose of taking you to a place where you can represent yourself as being in the kingdom of heaven. It's where God's method of operating can flourish, but it can only do so with the right attitudes of those who are stepping beyond their human feelings, emotions, desires, and desiring more so the leadership of God himself through the hand of Moses, through the feast, through the unity, through the worship of God himself, who is the creator of all these other things that are being worshipped, like trees and rain and sky by the Amorites. God created all of that. Now, I don't think the Amorites are any different than you. 
you have your worship points too. They're called Mercedes, Mansion, some of you Mother Earth, some of you still Sky, the stars. They're all his creation. But you rather worship, you'll worship your organization. power of your words and listen let me say it like this the power of your lack of words when it comes to empowering those who come to you for leadership in the kingdom of God and you offer them leadership only of your organization because you want the worship it's not the get down it's not the thing to do. It's empowering people to worship God by incorporating their talents and making sure that they're a part of the process as well. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, we want to continue. Uh, I, I listen, I know this isn't a typical commentary but I want you to take and eat the scroll. And I want you to, I don't want you to believe me, I want you to be driven to the word of God for yourself so that you can see the pattern of the kingdom of God and its operation and the righteousness attached to it. The righteousness is, a, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the righteousness of God is attached beautifully to his word. As Moses is looking backwards, he says in verse 28 of chapter 1, chapter 1 of Deuteronomy, verse 28, he says, Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people greater and taller than we, the cities greater and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the uh, 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 Anakims there, giants uh, with the history dating back uh, to Gen. Anyway, uh, then I said unto you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goes before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. I want to take this time right now to remind you that the importance of knowing your history is 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 is, is paramount. It's the it's one of the most important things you need to know. And I'm going to tell you the reason why God has well the reason why He says God one of the reasons why He says God has gone before you is because these people also know your history. So you're afraid of somebody who knows your history, but you don't know your history, so you're afraid of them. The, the battle is already won because everyone knows who owns the land. It is time to pay up. Now, you may not be in their head. That's the reason why you have to have faith in trusting God that he is speaking directly to you to go get the thing that he's telling you to go get but you still are going to have some battles. And where was that I really wanted to take you to? In verse 30, it says, The Lord your God which goes before you, he shall fight for you. That's not it. Verse 31, And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man does bear his son, in all the way that ye went until you came into this place. I've been walking with you throughout all the battles, losing friends, all these other things. In verse 32, yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God. And I'm walking you through it. You're seeing people fall from on the left to the right. The, 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 you know, people are uh, murmuring in their tents and stuff. I haven't left you. I'm still 
taking those who are interested to the promised land, to the promised past tense, to your ancestors and elders, to the promised land. The children, you, children of Israel, I'm taking you there. Only believe. Verse 33, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in fire by night to show you by what way ye shall, shall, shall go and in a cloud by day. I'm just reminding you of everything we've been doing over the last 41 years. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. There it is. Verse 34. Deuteronomy 1, 34. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear saying. Now, now this is what happens. Ying, ying, yang. Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see the good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. Your words kept you from your blessing. But the children will still inherit. See, this is confusing to some, and I understand why I think, because when I was younger, this stuff didn't make a whole lot of sense. But now that I'm older and have been studying the Word of God for a little, a little longer, it seems so crystal clear to me. Because when, when a human being thinks, he thinks only him or her thinks only of themselves. God does not. God thinks generationally. He thinks legacy. He thinks your straight line is about a centimeter. His straight line is, a, is thousands of feet both ways. This way up and down, up and down, north, south. His straight line can incorporate much more than your straight line can. Some, Maybe some of you don't understand that. I hope you do. It's where the grace and mercy is. In other words, you don't, you're never going to just walk, well, strike that. Most times you're not going to walk and just get to your destiny without any kind of resistance. There is resistance. So there's some going up, some going down, some going left, some going right. Some, there's some things happening. If it doesn't happen within your centimeter, you get discouraged. And you stop walking. And you start talking. And the Bible says in verse 34, Deuteronomy 34, when you start talking, he hears your voice. And he becomes wroth. And you can't get there because you're evil. Because you say you believe, but you don't. Verse 36 is telling. He says, save Caleb, the son of Jeff, uh, I, He shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon to his children because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, Moses, that is, for your sakes, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. Now, Moses is projecting a little bit because Moses chose to get frustrated, and it wasn't one time when he struck the rock. His words also need to be examined. Where, where are you on your word and action life? That's all I'm asking. Hey, listen, you, 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 you've accomplished some goals and, and been involved with some blessings that you have not shown gratitude to, to for yet because you're still complaining that it doesn't look the way you want it to look. <laughs> Hey, you know, but you but you got the children, you got the house, you got the car, you got the ministry, you got the business, you got the this. The business may not be making money. The children may be having problems. The house may need a roof, whatever. 
but the gratitude. Keep praying. Keep believing. Get you a roof. Continue to pray for your kids. I don't know. Continue to look for business partners. You know, continue to serve. Continue to do whatever, but move forward without your tongue saying, God, God brought us out here and left Egypt because he hates us. No, no, no. The vision is bigger than that. Cash app dollar sign Mr. Paul Dozier. Cash app dollar sign Mr. Paul Dozier. We're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. I do not know how long it's going to take. But hey, if this video or audio or however you're listening to this, whenever you're listening to this, is a blessing to you, please like and share it. Family, friends, business associates, your church, your ministry, good study material. Right now we're in the Torah, but we're going to be going beyond that once we get off into the book of Joshua. But what a blessing to be able to, to, to complete the Torah and document it. Just, I, you ha I'm just so in awe of this opportunity that God has given me. Uh, I really am. What a blessing. Thank you for taking the journey with us. And thank you for ta taking the journey with me.